Uh, good, so contrary to what you might expect from the title, this will not be a funny talk. Uh, you might say, Chris, why would I expect that? The title is also not funny, so <laughs> I would not argue with you. Uh, so we're all here on the seaside, but this talk is on a different seaside, and since it's not funny, we'll start with the conclusions. Um, so the, the main uh, punchline is that Seaside 512 uh, gives you relatively little quantum security beyond what is uh, coming from the cost of quantumly evaluating it on a uniform superposition. Um, so in particular, uh, for example, key recovery costs about 2 to the 16 such evaluations if you have about a terabit of uh, quantumly accessible classical memory. So that's ordinary memory that's in your laptop that you can query in the superposition, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. Uh, and so when you run the numbers on this, assuming that the, the evaluation costs uh, not much more than for the best case, uh, the best case distribution, which is a, a plausible assumption, we think, uh, breaking Seaside 512 costs a fair bit less than 2 to the 64 uh, T-gates, and it therefore falls well short of the claimed uh, NIST Category 1 quantum security level. Okay, so let's unpack this a little bit. If I get the clicker going. Good, okay, so Seaside uh, was proposed at AsiaCrypt uh, last year. It's an isogeny-based uh, so-called post-quantum commutative group action. It follows in the framework of uh, Covenes from 97. Uh, the central object is this uh, group action uh, involving an abelian group G and a set Z, and the action takes an element from each of those and returns an element of Z. Um, note that uh, this has nothing to do with other isogeny-based cryptography like SIDH, which uh, use non-abelian groups and don't involve group action. So all we have to, the only thing we have to say today is about Seaside. Um, this killer app for this uh, group action is a Diffie-Hellman style uh, key exchange. So you have a public parameter Z, and then each party chooses a secret group element, uh, applies the group action with that element and Z, and that becomes their public key. And then they can each compute a common shared key uh, in a very much uh, Diffie-Hellman style. Um, what makes Seaside particularly attractive is its uh, efficiency profile. So you have small keys, pretty fast key exchange uh, for parameters that were claimed uh, to have the NIST Category 1 security, which is that it should be as hard as AES uh, key search to break. Uh, oh, and these must be old slides. That's uh, 2 to the 170 divided by max depth uh, uh, logical quantum gates. There's also signature proposals, which have attractive uh, communication. So the main uh, way that people have considered attacking Seaside quantumly is uh, to do Seaside key recovery, that is, given the public key, find the secret key or equivalent, and it was shown um, in 2010 that this actually reduces to a hidden shift problem on the group. And in fact, that problem had been considered all the way back in 2003 by Cooperberg. Um, there's three main ingredients to the algorithms. Um, first, there's an oracle that outputs these random labeled uh, quantum states uh, by evaluating the action on the uniform superposition. Then there's some kind of sieve algorithm which combines these labeled states in a way to generate more favorable states. And then once the states become very favorable, you apply some kind of measurement uh, to recover information about the hidden shift. And uh, there's three classes of sieve algorithms. The first is Cooperberg's original, which gives you two to the order n, oracle calls in qubits. Regev improved the uh, amount of space to down to polynomial, but increased the number of oracle calls that were required. And then interestingly, Cooperberg gave a follow-up algorithm, uh, which gets you back to two to the order root n oracle calls and uh, classical bits of RAM which is quantumly accessible, it means you can query it in superposition, even though the RAM is holding classical bits. Um, Cooperberg called this the collimation sieve, or C-sieve for short, um, and it subsumes the prior two algorithms and offers more algorithmic trade-offs, uh, which we will exploit. So that's all asymptotic stuff, but what about concrete security? So the prior estimates for Seaside 512 uh, come from costing the Oracle, which was done in uh, Eurocrypt this year, and uh, they gave a the cost for evaluating on a somewhat non-uniform superposition, but there's been recent work to expect a uh, similar cost for uniform superposition. We're not concerned with the cost of the Oracle too much. Uh, we won't address that in this work, but we're looking at the sieve cost. So the original uh, Seaside paper used Regev's low space algorithm to estimate about two to the 62 Oracle calls, and that's, where, uh, that's what allowed them to set the parameters uh, as they did, uh, thinking for aiming for NIST level one. Um, this work from the last year went back to Cooperberg's original algorithm and dramatically reduced the number of oracle calls to about 2 to the 32, uh, but then quite a few qubits are required uh, for that. So what about the third algorithm, Cooperberg's uh, one that improves the previous two? Well, it turns out there was no prior work looking at that. So that's where we come in and uh, we look at this. So 
we're going to uh, improve practically uh, Cooperberg's quantum algorithm, CSIV algorithm, and analyze it uh, in the context of seaside parameters. Uh, this is a summary of the uh, various improvements. I just want to emphasize the final item, which is that we give code and actually run simulations of this, this quantum algorithm. It's actually pseudo-classical. You can simulate almost all of it and then just bake one little part of it uh, and, and actually run the, run the thing on a regular computer. Um, and we run it on group orders all the way up to the real seaside group order. Um, and here are the, the final results. The number of Oracle calls can be brought down to something like 2 to the 14 uh, with, with completely reasonable amounts of uh, classical memory. Moreover, the memory can be uh, accessed quantumly with existing methods uh, using quantum computation that's much lower than the rest of the attack. So this is, the, this is kind of the takeaway point. I will jump back to the final conclusions. The paper is available on ePrint, and you can uh, download the code and run it very easily at this location. Thanks.